it's Jag, and today I'm doing a double mystery build. Well, today I am building uh, two uh, effects pedal kits. Uh, I will say that they're from uh, Build Your Own Clone, but I'm not going to say which kits they are. Uh, originally, these were the kits I was going to call uh, one-shot builds and, and build each one, one video for each. Uh, but my plan has changed on that. Uh, I primed and painted the enclosures, and it turned out really well. When I first bought them, I thought, well, I'll just put them together. I'll paint the cases, and I don't really need to to label them but the the paint job looks so good on them I thought it's just a shame not to have artwork on there so I've asked Salem uh, that's Salem Jones our uh, the leader uh, songwriter singer and rhythm guitar player for One Soul Thrust um, I've asked Salem to uh, do the artwork on on those and so uh, I came late to the game for that part uh, but I still want to shoot these pedals so while I'm waiting for Salem to do her uh, lettering and artwork on the uh, the boxes I thought I would start by uh, populating the boards and, and getting them all ready to go in the enclosures so uh, instead of doing one uh, pedal at a time I'm going to do two. I'm calling it the double mystery build because I'm not going to tell you which pedals they are until they're done and I'm ready to test them. I've taken all of the components and uh, measured them to make sure that they were within spec. Uh, generally if a component's within 10% of its rated value uh, I will go with that. Some people get really picky about having it be exact. I think character comes from those little differences. And then, like I usually do, I stuck all the components uh, from lowest value to highest value in this piece of foam. So I can just grab them really quick and, and easy and I'm, and I'm ready to go. This is what we'll call, what we'll call pedal number one. So I'm going to populate the board and uh, I'm going to do that really quick here now. I'll put all of the uh, uh, components in the board. You can see on the board that they're, they're labeled which, which parts go where. So it makes it really easy to put together. I'm going to blast through that really quick and uh, show you a little trick that I'm going to do so that I can put them all in and solder them at one time. Okay, so that's the resistors and the diodes uh, on the board but not soldered yet. Um, like I say, I like to pre-populate with a bunch of stuff and then do all the solder joints all at one time. On a small board like this, that's really easy to do. On a, a board for an amp, uh, you kind of have to do it in little sections. I like to put all the low-lying components uh, on uh, first and then I use a little bit of tape just to tape them over so when I turn the board over nothing will fall out and then I can solder them all. Then once that's done I can put the capacitors on which stand a little taller and do the same thing. So I'm going to uh, put some tape on here and solder up these resistors and we'll get back to uh, do the capacitors in a few minutes. Okay, well that's all the resistors soldered, uh, so we'll get the capacitors in there now and do the same thing. I'll get them in, uh, tape over them, turn it over and we'll solder them in. And then uh, once we're done we'll do a, a final check of the component soldering on this board and we'll get on to doing mystery pedal number two and populating its board. And uh, make sure you get your polarized capacitors uh, right. Uh, your electrolytics are po polarized and they'll have a little white stripe down the side with an arrow usually with a minus in it so make sure you get your plus and minus correct on your electrolytics uh, in a pedal like this uh, not super bad things would happen but on a high power circuit like an amplifier you'd get smoke and it's real stinky smoke too It can be easy to lose track of 
all the ones you soldered and and if you've missed one or not usually it's not the end of the world you just go in and touch it up later but one of the things that you can do uh, when you've got it soldered you're ready to turn it uh, or you're ready to clip the leads uh, before you turn it back over is you can use a flashlight and just kind of shine it across the board and it just makes it really easy to see uh, if you have missed soldering a, a connection uh, it also can make it easier to see if you have a connection that's not maybe got enough solder on it or too much. So that's a little tip. Clip these, that looks good. Okay, I think I said we were going to be done after getting the capacitors, but we have one more thing we can mount on there, and that is the socket for the IC. Uh, we won't mount the IC until the pedal is completely soldered, and basically it's the last thing we'll do uh, before we're ready to test out the pedal. But we do want to put the IC socket in, and uh, the sockets uh, just... that eliminates your need to actually solder on the pins of the IC. ICs are more sensitive than anything else. You also want to make sure you don't touch the leads of the IC. You could short something or, or have a little static discharge and it could actually damage the IC. I've actually never had that happen that I can recall, but I know it can happen. So we'll put the IC in. When you put the IC in, there's a little notch on one end of the IC and the, the board will always designate, uh, have a little drawing where that notch should go. So make sure you put the uh, socket in uh, with the notch the right way around. It doesn't matter so much for the socket. It definitely matters when you're putting the IC in, which also has that little notch. So it's just a little visual uh, checker. Well, <laughs> I, I dropped it and it went straight in. Never had that happen before. Anyway, okay, so same thing. Just going to put a little tape on here to save some frustration while we're soldering. Okay, well that's board one soldered. Uh, we'll take it out of the uh, third hands here. I have a friend who's a machinist and he uh, turned me on to the idea of using a, a jeweler's loop when you have to check something small. I had never really thought about that, but so he gave me a jeweler's loop. Uh, this is what a, this is a five times jeweler's loop. And you can just use that to, to take a look at your, your connections and just make sure they all look good. You get a close-up connection of ev or a, a close-up view. That all looks good. You can also kind of see if anything's wiggling loose in its spot. And no, it's not. Uh, so next thing we're going to do is uh, get ready to populate the uh, the other board. The second uh, of these mystery pedal boards. Uh, going to do the same thing as uh, with populating the first one so I'm not going to talk or stop a lot I'm just going to go go blast through this and do it and uh, it will be done shortly that is a lot of little tiny resistors diodes I see sockets and again these can be kind of hard to see uh, which is offset by the benefit of not having to clip any leads once you've soldered uh, soldered them in place. So you just gotta make sure you get all of them. That's IC sockets. Five transistors. And you wanna be careful not to overheat the transistors. Uh, they can be sensitive to heat. So we got, sorry, not five, we got six to go in there. And we orient them all. They're indicated by a flat side. So well, first time for everything. Just ran my uh, uh, memory card down in my uh, ZV1, so haven't had that happen ever before. 
so not bad. Went almost a year without that happening uh, between my Acasos and my ZV-1. So I don't know what was the last part that was uh, filmed before that went out. I, I didn't really notice that it stopped. So uh, where I'm at now is uh, I have... Uh, uh, put in the diodes. I have soldered in the IC sockets. Uh, I've installed all of the transistors, six of them, and I'm ready to solder them. Uh, before you solder in your transistors, one thing that you uh, want to make sure you check is just you've got them oriented right. On this PC board, it, it has um, a, a diagram on the PC board of the orientation of them with a flat side and then it's rounded at the back. So you, you put your transistors in with the flat side to the flat side. So before you solder them, just double check that one because that's, that's one of the most common things for people to get wrong. That and getting diodes in the back, uh, in backwards or electrolytic capacitors in backwards. So those, those are the things you want to always double check. Well, the only things left to install are the capacitors and the trim pot. So uh, let's check what they want us to do next. Trim pot. So um, on a lot of boards, uh, PC boards like this, that use a trim pot, um, there are different kinds of trim pots. The PC boards uh, can be... Um, uh, made or, or drilled for different uh, pinouts on different trim pots. Um, so on this one, you just uh, there's there's three leads, but there's five holes for the trim pot, and the instructions cover that. Uh, it's not a problem. Uh, you just put the trim pot. Uh, you just put three of the leads in, and it's really obvious where they go. There's one at the top, and then there are two in a row, and another two in a row. So. Uh, you just install that. I think I'll uh, solder the trim pot in place before I do anything else. Because they can be a little finicky. Okay, capacitors now, and then we're done with this part of the build. We're getting quite a few components on the board now and in different heights, so my little tape trick's not gonna, going to work. So I'm putting the capacitors in and just bending the leads out so that when I turn it over, they won't fall out. Okay, electrolytics, and then we're done for uh, this first episode. Okay, well that's it for uh, this first episode of the uh, double mystery pedal build. Uh, so we've got uh, both uh, PC boards populated. So next episode we'll put them in the enclosures and uh, solder up all the uh, off-board components. And uh, hopefully episode after that uh, you can actually see the artwork on the enclosures. Uh, please give me a thumbs up or leave a comment. That really helps my video get viewed, and I'd appreciate that kind of help, and it doesn't take much. I will answer uh, comments. Uh, the links for my band One Soul Thrust are in the description below. Um, I'm not putting links to these pedals, uh, uh, pedal kits yet. Um, I will after I let you know what they are, uh, but they are build-your-own-clone uh, pedal kits. 
and uh, I'm very impressed. Uh, those kits are, are very, very well put together and uh, very easy to build. A beginner would have no problem uh, building these pedals. So thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.